My big dream, my big dream, my big dream was to come to the UK and uh, become a professional footballer and to make it to the top, to play in the Champions League, to play in the FA Cup, to be a champion because that was my dream. My, my, my objective was to get to my target and my target was to speak to Alex Ferguson. I felt that if I was walking up to someone like Mark Tyson and I said that I could kick his ass, it will, it will put me to the, to the test. So if I come up to Sarah Alex and I said, please give me a go, I, I thought maybe. So um, I, first I started writing letters to uh, uh, Manchester United to ask them for a football trial. And obviously they answered back after a while and they said that uh, they, they, they couldn't do it. Uh, so I had to, to, to be more creative. The plan was, uh, <laughs> the plan was to offer them some money 20 million pounds. Obviously, I didn't have that money, but the, the idea was to catch, was, was, was to bait them. So that was a trick that I tried to, to use to catch their attention, to be able to, 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 to play. At least to have a, that platform to show that I, I'm as good as any of the first team players. They didn't buy it. I, I did go to Manchester, and that was the day after uh, Manchester United lost to uh, Porto, Mourinho. I was there the next day and uh, when I got there I realized that uh, it was going to be quite a challenge to get inside. I had all my kits under my track suit. My plan initially was to, to make a scene, which was to jump over the fence and get there and if uh, there was a lot of fuss and they would ask what's the, the case and then, you know, force, force my way in. I managed to pass security to convince the security to get me through the car park and to the reception. Uh, getting to the reception, uh, the PA uh, realized that I was not someone that they were expecting. She looked at the security guy and she looked at, uh, at, at me like, who is this guy? And then she asked, what's the purpose of your visit? And I said to her that I've been waiting for about 10 years from the time that I came to the UK up until now to be able to speak to him to have a, a trial because I believe that I'm good enough to be in the team and uh, she smiled and she said to me well I'm afraid that if you don't have an appointment you'll have to wait outside I waited 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 for at least 30 35 minutes and there was all the first team uh, players coming out Roy Keane, Nicky Butt I didn't go for that. I didn't go to ask for autograph because I felt that I was as good as any of these guys. So I didn't go there for. And the last person to come out was Sir Alex. So when he came out, I just waved at him with my, my his autobiography, and I asked him uh, if I could uh, have a trial. And then he said to me that he couldn't, which can kind of completely flatten me, like upside down. He, he said to me that. He couldn't do that because there was an academy that I had to go through. So it was like my whole world crumbling down. It made me realize that all this was just a, um, a smoke screen. That the real place for me was home. So all these years that I spent thinking that uh, I could make it abroad, I should have been home. But then if I wasn't here, I would have never uh, known exactly the, the, the truth. Because all this image of uh, that most of us in Africa think that we need to go to the States, we need to go to Europe uh, to succeed. It's just a mirage. It's just fake. It's just, uh, it's just constructed. It's not true. We can make it back home because we are the richest people in the world. Although in the eyes of uh, the world they think we are poor, but we are the richest people in the world and I didn't realize that I had to experience it for myself. So if I had to do it again, I'd probably stay home. <laughs> Girls, I know it hurts to lose your guy. To another girl.